in this session, I want to have interactions as much as possible. I like to talk and I like to listen to you all and I like to see you all. And that's why my presentations are usually with few bullet points that I share on my screen. These are some of the activities I would expect you all to do during your coming year, starting in a few days. Of course, you can do more. Um, 15 theoretical activities that you can do. I want you all to put in the chat, how many do you think you will do? It's not just that you are doing a task for the club, but you will also learn something in the process. So before the meeting, create a brand compliant and engaging poster using the brand manual as your guide. Here we have something called the resources. And if you scroll down in the resources, we will get the brand portal. So, and in the brand portal, the two things that you will be interested in, is of course, the brand manual and the brand images. Now, one of the things that they did last year with the brand manual is they made it completely online. And if you scroll down, you have all the sections of what constitutes branding, the how to use the logo. You can click on logo and it will tell you everything there is to know about the logo. And within here itself, suppose you want this particular logo, a color logo, and they have JPG, they have PNG. These are basically image formats. If you are primarily working in Canva, my advice always is look for PNG because they are the highest quality. If I wanted this logo in the PNG format, then all I will do is I will click here on this down arrow and you can just click on download and download it on your computer and then use it anywhere you want. If you want to look at the colors, you click on the color palette and it will tell you what are the colors that we can use when creating content. So in Toastmasters, we have only three main colors, true maroon, loyal blue and cool gray. We can also use black and white. And the yellow color should be only used to highlight something. But what really has been added, which makes your designs pop out, is the use of gradients. You can create this gradients of blue. You can create gradients of maroon. You can create gradients of cool gray. And that also create, allows you to create impactful designs. In addition to that, we have the fonts. We have only two fonts available. One is called the Gotham font and one is called the Myriad font. Gotham is normally used for your headings. Myriad Pro is used for your body. Unfortunately, these are paid fonts. We cannot afford them. So what Toastmasters has done is it has said, okay, you cannot use, uh, if you cannot buy Gotham font, you can use Montserrat, which is free. And if you cannot use Myriad Pro, you can use Source Sans Pro. I see a lot of problems when people start using images. We should always use the brand image, which is about people, about leadership, about communication. So which means we shouldn't be using pictures of uh, landscapes, animals, children, food, appliance, medicine. All this should be avoided because that doesn't convey what Toastmasters is all about as a brand. Also avoid illustrations, clip arts, and so forth. So that is all I have to tell you as far as the brand manual is concerned. There is a lot of information there. After this session, you should go to the brand manual. Have a look at it. I'll give you some examples that I have personally created. You can create very powerful content using the brand guidelines. Primary role, I would say, is to bring guests. And the way you will do that is publish them on different uh, uh, mediums that are available to you. Social media is the easiest one these days, but I still hold the thought that if you put it in your community, for example, in a newspaper, that this meeting is there, that would reach out to the most number of non-Toastmasters. Because many times as VPPR, we try to create a poster, we put it in a club group, we put it in a district group, but who are we reaching out to? Are we reaching out to non-Toastmasters, right? If you put it on your Facebook uh, page, for example, only your friends will know. If you put it in LinkedIn, yeah, little more non-Toastmasters will come to, hey, what, is the, what are they talking about? Think of the tools that are available to you to reach out to the maximum number of non-Toastmasters and publish them there. And of course, you have to keep your members also informed. So make sure that if you have WhatsApp groups for your club, they are also uh, kept abreast of whatever is happening. 
and in your district, of course, priority should be how do I reach out to non Toastmasters to bring them to my club as guests. So invite guests, prospects, and send them individually emails if you want, with the agenda, the location, your Zoom ID. Make sure that they have the right information so that their calendar is booked and they come for your meeting. This is an example of some of the brand compliant posters that I personally have created. I'm not saying they're the best, but you can see that you can create impactful posters using the brand guidelines. So here I've used a lot of gradients and photographs of real people, my club members, so that uh, people can relate to them. I've used also the transparency concept that is available in the brand manual, check it out. So you have colors, you have gradients, and you have transparencies. So using this, you can create a range of colors to still retain the brand identity of those masters. Uh, this is an example of um, they should see the benefit of coming to Toastmaster clubs. Here, for example, do you want to become a confident public speaker? Wouldn't it be nice if you take one uh, picture of a confident speaker from your club or yourself, you know, and then show the benefits? Uh, this is an example of an XCOM poster, which you might have to do now as your first task. Try to create a nice XCOM poster for your club and publish it during the meeting. First is you have to keep your um, members updated on what's happening. Uh, report the, uh, how you're promoting the club, how many guests you have brought into the club. Announce if you have received any PR uh, awards. And of course, in, if you are meeting in person, make sure the moment guests come in, you interact with them before the meeting, during the meeting, and after the meeting. And as much as possible, I believe in taking photos. So whenever I get an opportunity, take, I take photos of our club members delivering speeches, listening attentively. This shows uh, non-Toastmasters what it will be if they come and they want to improve their public speaking skills. People enjoying themselves, networking, that's the messages we need to give when we are creating PR content. One important thing that you'll have to remember when you are taking photos of people and publishing them on social media, what you need to get? Their consent. Once the meeting is over, the first thing, try to thank the people for coming for the meeting. Create some posters of the meeting. It is also your job as a PR to promote the Toastmasters brand. Here we are talking about uh, a workshop on how to deliver effective evaluation. Create simple posters that uh, pique the interest of those who are coming across this uh, content. One thing I would like you all to invest your time during this year is create a plan to design a newsletter. A newsletter is a great team activity. It will teach you team coordination because a newsletter cannot be created by a VPPR. You can be a coordinator, but you cannot create the articles that are required to be published in the newsletter by yourself. You might do one. You need uh, views from your president, you need views from your education, VP education, uh, membership and other members who want to contribute, write articles. It gives all your members an opportunity to voice their opinions. Canva is a great tool, uh, very easy to create newsletters. There are so many templates that you can use. Try to promote other programs like Speechcraft. You can conduct open houses. Open houses will just focus on bringing as many uh, leads as possible. What else we can do? We have to promote our members. And I cannot stress enough about, uh, it is not just about bringing new uh, leads to the club, but also to retain the existing members. And you do that by encouraging them. So whenever they do something special, like give an icebreaker, it's an achievement, right? So next day you will create a nice poster, and say thank you for delivering your icebreaker or somebody completed a level you will create a poster so that you announce that achievement so the club members and others will also be um, motivated by that as a PR you should try to attempt is to create a team a PR team subcommittee you know bring one or two members uh, into the team so you'll distribute the work and more importantly, a team will help you to build the successor. So when, after one year, when it is time for you to 
step back and give the role to somebody else, that team member has already gained the skills. They already know how to use maybe the design tools like Canva. So create the team and create a PR plan. As a public relation, we have, as I said, two key goals. That is to bring positive awareness of Toastmasters and to attract and retain ex uh, existing members. It requires keeping the public, which is the external audience and members, the inter. So you have to deal with both external as well as internal, informed about the club or district activities through effective communication and media relation. Good public relation will build membership and gain public recognition. Retain your existing members by motivating them, uh, encouraging them with awards and whatever they do in the club. Bring new uh, prospects so that the rest of the XCOM team like VP membership can work with them to convert them into club members. And these are some of the skills that you will learn if you do your role effectively. You learn marketing and promotion, you learn social media, you learn how to develop media relations, newsletters and creating news reels, videos as your VPPR.